good morning dear students uh, well i hope that you all are doing good you all are pretty fine at your homes uh, and i do even hope that you are sincerely preparing the notes for all the live classes that are being taken by the teachers through this platform of youtube channel of the school okay uh so in the previous class what we had done we actually did, did the format for notice and email writing i even gave you two questions i'll soon try to upload the questions in the written format in the school's website okay uh but please uh, be sincere be sincere with all the homeworks that are being given to you okay through this channel after the live classes now i shall proceed with the format of letter i told you in the previous class no after we are done with the format of notice and email i first gave you the format of notice and email why because that was something completely new to you okay you are for the first time being exposed to this concept of notice and email writing and this format of formal and informal letter you have already done but it is only for the sake of revision you shouldn't completely stop being serious about it so i'll first today in our session in this session of ours i'll first give you the format of formal informal letter i'll write the format over here and it's my humble request that please follow even the punctuation marks that is important you cannot ignore it you cannot avoid it okay so without any delay i'll uh, i'll begin with the format of formal letter you know what are the formal letters the letters that we basically write for the official purpose for example suppose if i tell you to write a letter to the principal of your school for uh, exempting you from the fine that has been imposed on you for some or the other reason if you are supposed to write a request letter or a letter to your principal then that is formal letter you all take leave isn't it now after that is the uh, protocol of the school when you are absent for one or two days or when you are absent for few days the day you are present in the school you are supposed to submit your leave application to the principal you are supposed to get your application signed by the principal of the school that is formal letter okay so uh, without much conversation i'll first write the format and then i'll explain to you the different parts of it what i am going to write now is the format of formal letter
you can see I have written the format over here. Now let me tell you what are these parts for and then I will tell you the mount division. Okay. Now <coughs> the very first part. House number 123. Sorry there will be a comma over here. Okay it's already there. It's already there. House number 123 comma the, and then in the next line. Rakti Nagar phase 4 comma. Chargawa, Gorakhpur 273013. This is the pin code of uh, this area. This is the pin code of Chargawa. Now, the very first part up till here, up till this pin code, this denotes sender's address. Sender's address. Now, who is the sender? You. The one who is sending the application or the one who is writing the application is the sender. Okay, so this will be your address. You are the sender, so this will be your address. I have written over here a, a means like a fictional address, but when you are writing, make sure you write your own address. Then comes here the date, date when you are writing the application. Then the principal comma, little class school comma, Rapti Nagar phase 4 comma, Chargama full stop. This is the address of the recipient. Now when you are writing an application to your principal, who is the recipient? Who is going to get the application? Your principal. So this is recipient's address. Okay. Then, dear sir, this is very clear to you. When you, uh, uh, dear sir means what? You are greeting the receiver. So, this is uh, salutation. This is what? Uh, salutation or your greetings to the receiver. Then comes the subject. Now, suppose uh, when you are writing the formal letter. The formal letter is always uh, uh, like it is for a specific reason. Okay, for example, as I just uh, gave you an example in the beginning of the session, for example, if you are asked to write a letter to the principal of your school, requesting him or her to exempt you from the fine which has been imposed on you for some or the other reason. Now, what happens when we are writing these official letters, the official people, the people, those who are already in higher authority, who are reading our letters, they actually want to go through the, means in the moment they get your letter, they want to focus on the purpose behind you writing the letter. Sometimes they may not have so much of time to go through your entire letter. So that is why this subject for formal letter is must. Okay. And under this subject, you will be writing the reason why you are writing the letter. For uh, example, if you write the letter for uh, seeking leave, okay, then you will write over here uh, requesting to take leave, okay, or requesting to exempt the fine, like that, okay. But the basic purpose, the gist for of your of you writing the the gist of you writing the letter, the motto behind you writing the the motto behind writing the letter has to be mentioned here under the subject portion. Okay. Then this is the body of the letter. Okay. And finally comes yours faithfully comma XYZ. This XYZ is your full name. For example, if I have to write here my full name, I will write Madhumita. Banerjee. Okay. Now there are certain minute things that I would like to explain to you. See, after every line of this address, first line, second line, third line, after every line there is a comma. Okay. And when finally the address ends, you are supposed to give a full stop. Clear? Then you will leave one line. This space means you will be leaving one line and then you will write the date. After the date ends, there will not be multiple lines when you are writing the date. 
date will be accommodated in only one line so here you will after the date ends you will put a full stop these punctuation marks are important so please as i am minutely telling you this go on mentioning it in your copy then comes this recipient's address portion where the principal then there has to be a comma or suppose you are writing a letter to the district magistrate so the district magistrate comma then little flower school comma rapti nagar phase 4 comma and finally when your uh, this thing your uh, recipient's address when the section comes to an end you will put a full stop please make sure after every line i am putting a comma and when the particular section is coming to an end i am giving a full stop okay same is the case dear sir okay dear, dear sir is actually the beginning of my letter so i'll just write a, give a full stop over here so after subject you will just write the subject there has to be no comma no nothing once the subject ends you can give a full stop then the body of the letter and when you write your space fully please class pay attention to this part this is important suppose this is the line of your copy suppose or i'll explain it in a better way over here suppose this is your copy okay these these are the lines of your copy and here you are writing your space fully please make sure that the tail of the y it doesn't go below this line this will if you are doing this mistake if the tail of the y goes below this line you will be losing mark okay so i am that is why this is serious and that is why i am explaining it with this like detail with this detail this tail of the y will not go below the below this line yours faithful clear and comma see i have given here a comma yours faithfully comma and then name and even after name no need to give the full stop when you are writing your name even there if it is a formal letter and if you don't like, don't write your full name suppose if it was a formal letter and i had written only madhumita i won't get marks for this uh, for this uh, leave taking part if it is a formal letter it is mandatory that you write your full name clear now let me tell you the mark division and when i tell you the mark division thereafter there will be some twist which i'll be explaining to you in the upcoming sessions okay your letter i told you your letter is of 10 marks okay you have to attempt only one either formal or informal letter now for the address portion for the sender's address you will get half marks clear then for the date again you will have half marks then for the recipient's address again you will have half marks for the sub, for the salutation you will have half marks for the body of the letter you will have two marks and finally for the subs, uh, subscription portion you will have one mark now what are, what is the total mark half plus half one 2 to 4 plus 1 5 that means 5 what about the remaining 5 marks like i told you know that the letter is of 10 marks but out after this calculation the letter is of only 5 marks then what about the remaining 5 marks the remaining 5 marks will be carried forward from the sc okay that is why i told you there is a twist now let me just give you a hint of it though i also i'll not discuss it in much detail today see out of the 10 marks you will get 5 marks in letter okay remaining 5 marks will be carried forward from sc how i told you yesterday that your sc will be maximum of 20 marks now based on the marks that you are receiving in the sc you will be given grade a b c d e okay f f do f means fail like you will not have any mark for that if you have a grade then in the letter now five you have 
5 is already there. From the letter, whatever you are writing, you already get 5. Out of the remaining 5 marks, if you get A grade in essay, your mark would be 4 to 4.5. If you get B grade, 3 to 3.5. C grade, 2 to 2.5. D grade, 1 to 1.5. E grade, 0 0.5. F grade means no mark for the letter. Okay. Whatever you score out of this 5, only that will be your mark for the letter. You will not be getting any mark carried forward from SA if you get an F grade. So, that is why I told you that day that this essay is important. Because it will not only be deciding the mark of the essay, it will even decide somewhere the mark of your letter. Second most important thing, as I told you just now as I gave the format, out of this five, out of this five, two marks only is for the body, body of the letter. Remaining three marks is for your format. So even if you make any mistake in the body, that, okay fine, can be considered to a certain extent. But suppose if you are well versed with the format, if you start practicing the format from today itself, it is very obvious that you are going to get three no matter what. At least this three marks you will get no matter, for, no matter what. See, when I am taking the class, I do not only focus on uh, those who are the first rank holders. I even try to give some hints and tips for those who are actually average or above average or below average students. Okay. So, there are certain shortcuts for you. Try to focus on these minute things and the, the moment you start taking care of these minute things, no, the bigger things will automatically be easier for you. I hope I could make myself clear. As far as this is concerned, I'll talk about this in much more detail once the school reopens, okay? Because uh, if it is taught in life, I means like a uh, physical classroom, that would be more beneficial, I suppose. I'll, uh, but I hope for the timing, I made myself clear that based on essay, you will have grades A, B, C, D, E, F. Based on those grades, you will have marks that would be carried forward in letter. Your letter basically is of only 5 marks. I hope now this is clear. You know where to give the full stop. You know where to leave a line. You know how to write and you know the mark division. For sender's address half marks, date half marks, receiver's address half marks, uh, salutation half marks. Only your subscription has got 1 mark. And the body of the letter also will give you 2 marks. Now you may ask uh, one question, you may have one question that you have missed since you told that subject is very important by, but why there is no mark allotted for the subject. So yes, that is true. Council doesn't provide you any mark separately for the subject. Subject and body are counted together. They will be under like this two marks will give you mark for the subject as well. Okay. So it's advised whenever you are writing the letter, formal letter, do not try to avoid the subject portion. Try to be very specific when you are writing the subject and try to be very choosy with the words, okay, when you are writing the formal letter. Because formal means when you are writing the letter to some, uh, uh, to a person who is an higher authority, okay. So the more uh, sophisticated you are with your language, the better impression will it have on the examiner. And in the real life also, if you are writing a letter to any high official, high, higher authority, the more, the same thing applies there as well. The more sophisticated you are with your language, the better impression will it have on the uh, person to whom you are writing the letter. Okay, now let me move to the next part. We are done with the uh, formal letter. <coughs> Format of the formal letter. Now I'll will move with the format of the informal letter. Students, please, I do repeat it again and again that try and jot down all these informations that are being given to you. Because once the school reopens, it will be difficult. 
or even may not be possible to repeat these basic things again. Okay? That is why I repeatedly told you to prepare a copy in the previous sessions. Previous two sessions I have told you that please make sure you prepare a copy. You prepare a notebook. If you do not have a notebook as of now, you can use your previous standards notebook. Okay? And there is no means like hard and fast rule that uh, I have to have such kind of notebook or anything. Or if you have received the notebooks from the school, that is well and good. You please do not delay. Start uh, jotting it down in the fair straight away. And please be quick when you are jotting it down because the videos may not be available to you after a few days. Anyways, uh, now I will proceed with the format of informal letter. Informal means... What do you mean by informal? Informal is actually the opposite of formal. Formal letter we are writing for official purpose. And informal letter we write for non-official purpose. Now what do you mean by non-official purpose? Non-official purpose means suppose you are staying in hostel. And from there you write a letter to your mother or to your father or to your sister or to one of your relative or to your friend. All these letters will come under the category of informal letter. Format is more or less same but there are certain things which were included in formal letter and will have no, no place in informal letter. So let me proceed. I'll just again I'll write it first and then I'll explain it to you. actually shorter than the previous one so will be the so the as a result of that even the mark distribution will be a little different but let me explain it to you first from this house number till this pin code 273013 as obvious it is the sender's address you are the sender you will be writing your address over here okay this will be the date date when you are writing the letter then comes the salutation to whomsoever you are writing. For example, if you write it to your father or mother, you can be your mommy, dear papa or to whomsoever you are sending the letter. That would that particular person's name or that particular person's relation with you will be written over here as uh, the salutation. Then here this is the body of the letter. Okay. This is the body of the letter. Then, yours affectionately. Again, I would repeat this. Suppose, this is the line of your copy. Okay. The tail of the Y shouldn't go below the line. The tail of the Y, tail of this Y will not go below the line. And then, name. No full stop over here. First line of your address, comma, second line, comma, third line, comma, last line, full stop. When this chunk came to an end, I have given up, I have put a full stop over here. 
Same goes with the date. After the date, I have put a full stop. Then, dear friend, salutation, comma. After the uh, comma, I started. I will leave one line. You will leave one line and you will begin the body of the letter. And then, yours affectionately, comma, name. There is one thing that I have told you when I gave you the format of formal letter. Again, I would be repeating it. Whenever you are writing the formal letter, you are supposed to write your full name. Madhumita Manarji, whatever is your full name, your first name, your last name has to be written, okay, without fail. And when you are writing the informal letter, without any failure, please make sure that you are only writing your first name. If you write full name over here, no mark. At least at the school levels, we won't give you mark, okay. And... <coughs> When you are writing the formal letter, at the subscription portion or at the leave taking portion, what we used to write? Faithfully. There will be no other exceptions over there. There can be only two words, two words which we will be accepting. One is faithfully, the other one is affectionately. Faithfully when you write the formal letter and affectionately when you are writing the informal letter. I hope I have made myself clear. Okay. Now, again I will repeat one thing. After one chunk ends, leave a line, next line. Next section. Then again leave a line, next section. Again leave a line, begin the body of the letter. Again leave one line and the last section. I will give you the mark division for this as well. <clears throat> as usual, the sender's address will have half marks. Okay. It was, same was the case earlier. Your date also will have half marks. Your salutation or greeting will have half marks. Okay. Your uh, leave taking. Like earlier it will have one mark. Now total mark one half plus half one. One two two and a half. Right. So out of five you are going to get 2.5 because of the format. Remaining marks 2.5 for the body. In case of formal letter, the body was of 3 marks. Okay, sorry, the body was of 2 marks. Where, uh, what about these half marks? This half mark because there we had two address. So, recipient address and sender's address. So, that half mark was adjusted here, there. Since in case of informal letter, we do not have the recipient's address. So, that is why 2.5 over here. Clear? Any confusion? So, 5 marks for the letter and remaining 5 marks will be carried over from the essay. I hope this format is now clear to you. If, I'm sorry, I'm just erasing it. If you haven't jotted it down, go through the video once again after the, the set class is over and then you can jot it down. Okay? Now dear students, in the previous class, I told you that please start revising tense. Okay? Please start revising tense. Okay, I won't give you any homework as such today because I'll try to upload it in the website soon. Uh, for the time being, you do the homeworks, you write the questions that I had given to you in the previous session. And for today's class, for the time being, you only be thorough with the format. Not only these two format, but all the four format. Four format means format of notice, email and both the letters. Okay. Now, <coughs> in the previous class, I told you that I shall begin with tense in my first coming uh, sessions. I hope we have enough time today. So, let me begin with tense today. At least... A, a certain portion of it we can complete. Now, what is tense? I think you all know it very well that tense tells us about the time of action. For example, suppose if I write, uh, suppose let us take the example, I am teaching you English 1. Now, when I say I am teaching you English one, which particular word over here tells the tense? It's am teaching. This am teaching makes you aware of the tense or 
the time of the action. What does it tell? It tells that the action is happening now. Okay. Now suppose if I replace this am with was. Now it tells you that the action was taking place in the past. If I replace this was with will be. It is very clear that the action has not yet occurred but will be taking place in the near future. So how do we know like uh, how did we know that uh, what these uh, words indicate? For knowing that we have to study tense in detail. Now before we move further with tense let me tell you one thing which you all might be knowing. I am pretty sure that tense, there are actually three types of tense. Present tense, okay, present tense, past tense and future tense. Okay, uh, now why am I starting with tense? Uh, uh, tense, it's because tense is actually the very basis of whatever you do in English language. If you are not aware of tense properly, you will not be able to do uh, direct and indirect. You will be struggling when it comes to active and passive voice. Then you would be struggling with uh, uh, like even uh, uh, like syn synthesis of sentences. You will be struggling with uh, deg uh, degrees of comparison. You will be struggling with these chance so that is why it is suggested that first we you be thorough with tense and you have your previous classes book like 7th standard book or 8th standard book and take those books and you will get the idea uh, about all these things in pretty detail okay now there are three types of tense present tense past tense and future tense what is this present tense about suppose if i tell you uh as I, as I gave this example, or if I say I teach you English grammar. Now when I say I teach you English grammar, it is actually an action that is hap that happens now. It is an action that refers to something. It is an action that is actually going on in the present time. I teach English one actually refers to an action that occurs in the present time. If I tell you, I taught you English grammar. Now, the sense can be, I taught you English grammar in the previous class or I taught you English grammar in the 7th class or 6th class like that. And if I tell you, I will teach you English grammar. It may be, I will teach you it from the next month or from the next year. Okay. Now, these are the three tenses. Present tense, something that tells us about, tense that tells us about an action that is happening now. Okay. This word is important. That is an action that is happening now. Okay. Past tense tells us about an action that has already happened. It has already happened. Okay, already over. Over in the near, near, uh, just like in the near past or in the distant past. And the last one is future tense that tells us that something will be occurring. Will be occurring. I hope up till here. You all are already well aware of. Okay. But thereafter if we go in detail. We have certain uh, uses of these tense. Now again. Uh, this present tense, past tense and future tense. These all tenses will have four sub parts. Right. The first one is. Suppose if I am talking about present tense. It will be simple present tense. Simple present then present continuous then present perfect and last is present perfect continuous okay now all these tenses present simple present present continuous present perfect present perfect continuous when I go to past tense, it will be simple past, past continuous, past perfect and past perfect continuous. The same goes for future tense as well. 
Now all these tenses, all these sub parts of the tenses have certain specific use. Okay, that is why when you are speaking in English, okay, or when people, well, if they speak in English, there are at times when uh, they use, suppose if in a sentence they are using simple present, but actually the correct form of tense that has to be used there is present perfect. The moment you make all this mistake, we understand that you are weak at tense. Okay, so that is why tense is basically the base. Tense is actually nothing but the base of English language and if you do not know tense properly, you will have, you will face problem when you are speaking, first of all. Second of all, you will even face problem in uh, almost everything that you do with English. Okay, so without much delay, I'll begin with present tense. Let me begin with present tense. This is also like I will discuss the usage in detail along with example. It is pretty much expected that as I write the uses over here, you will also jot down the uses in your copy. Okay? Like this is a kind of notes that you are, that you are going to prepare and this you will be writing it down in your fair copy. And when the school reopens, please get it checked by the concerned teacher. Now beginning with present tense. Okay. So I have already told you right that present tense is what? Present tense is a tense that tells the that an action is occurring now. Okay. Now present tense like all the other, other tenses has got four sub parts. Four parts. Uh, the first one is simple present, then present continuous, present perfect, present perfect, continuous. We shall begin with simple present tense. We shall begin with simple present tense. Okay. Now, <clears throat> in simple present tense, uh, there are certain uses of simple present tense. Let me tell you about those uses uh, one by one. The very first use is to tell about an universal truth. To tell about an universal truth. Okay. Now, to tell about the universal truth. What is universal truth? For example, if I say the earth revolves around the sun. Okay, if I say the earth revolves around the sun. If I say this, it's a universal truth that happens on a daily basis and there will be no exception to this. If I tell you the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, it's a universal truth. For any other day, there will not be any exception to this rule. It will keep on happening every day in the same routine. All these type of universal truths are written using simple present tense. You cannot say the earth revolved around the sun. No. It happened, it is happening and it will even happen in the future. So, since it's, an, it's a constant thing, it will remain like what? It will always be written in uh, simple present tense. Similarly, suppose if I universal truth or even facts, okay? Even facts are applicable over here. If I tell you that honesty is the best policy. If I tell you this, honesty is the best policy. This is a fact. This is also a truth that this is something which has been accepted worldwide without any failure. You may say, no, for me, honesty is not a best policy. That is your problem. But for the world, honesty is the best policy. It is a fact and hence will always be written in simple present tense. I hope I am clear. The next use is, you will be using, you will be using, uh, 
simple present tense to act, express a habitual action. Now, what is habitual action? For example, if I tell you, I come to school by bus. Okay? Now, when I say I come to school by bus, this is what? This is something which you are doing, you are doing on a daily basis. No matter what, every day you come to school by bus. So, all these type of habitual action. Okay? I get up. In the morning at 6 o'clock. It's your habit. I read newspaper in the morning. That is your habit. I sleep at 12. Uh, I, I sleep at 12. Okay. In the night. That is your habit. That is that's, that is something you are practicing on a daily basis. So all these habitual actions will be written in what? They will be written in uh, simple present tense. Then comes. For conditional sentences, like, I think you have not done it yet. There are three types of conditional sentence, okay? Type 1, type 2 and type 3. We have a separate chapter dealing with this, so I won't go into detail. But type 1 uses simple present tense. If I say, now what is the format for type 1 conditional sentence? If plus present tense if plus simple present tense plus will or shall for example if I say if she invites me comma I will join the party if she invites me, I'll join the party. Now, see to the first clause, if she invites me. The verb over here is invites. This verb invites tells us that the action is in present tense. I gave you the format already. If plus present plus will or shall. Now, as for the format I have used here invites. As for the format I have used here will. Okay, so this is the type 1 conditional. What is this? This is type 1 conditional sentence. Whenever you want to frame a sentence using type 1, please make sure that your first clause will have present tense and the second clause, the conditional, uh, sorry, uh, the clause that fulfills the condition will be Having the, uh, will be having will or shall. Okay. Then comes, the next use is, to denote an action which is planned for future. Denote an action planned for future. Okay? Denote an action planned for future. The first one was to tell about the universal truth. Second was about habitual action. Third was type 1 conditional sentence. Next one is denoting an action planned for future. Example, if I, if I say uh, the school reopens tomorrow. The school reopens sorry 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 the school reopens tomorrow if i say this that the school reopens tomorrow although the action is tomorrow so you can say that miss if it is tomorrow why can't we write it in future tense but this is something, when I say it reopens tomorrow, I'm pretty sure about it. It is completely planned that no matter what, this is going to happen. Okay? So, that is why this action, these type of actions which are planned for the future are always written in simple present tense. So, we have seen four uses. The next one is... Uh, okay. The next one is, that is very easy for you. Okay. Have you heard?
heard the commentary when you watch the cricket match or when you watch wrestlemania wwe okay that you all, you all might be doing that no when you watch that there are commentaries being given okay or if you see any youtube channel or if you have uh, watched your mother watching any cookery show when the recipes are being told okay all these things are being done in simple present tense okay why because commentaries and recipes all those things are happening at that time if i tell you if i suppose if i am watching a match and i tell you tendulkar tendulkar hits six okay that means when i say tendulkar hits six that means i am watching the match i am giving the live commentary that is why i am saying tendulkar hits six okay i cannot say tendulkar is hitting six no i cannot okay because that is not a continuous process i will say tendulkar hits six so more or less we are done with this uh, usage of simple present tense what are the uses i'll just go th- i'll uh, will have a quick recapitulation i we discussed five uses of uh, this uh, simple present tense the first and the foremost the most important is whenever you are talking about a universal truth okay second is whenever you are talking about a habitual action third one is in type one conditional sentence what is the format of that if plus present tense plus will or shall the next one is whenever we are giving live commentaries okay whenever we are giving the live commentary or whenever we are giving uh, narrating the recipe okay that time we'll have a uh, simple present tense and the last one is if at all any action which is already going to be means we are you are sure that the action will surely take place in the future for all those things we are using simple present tense i hope this is clear please go through it please write try to write one one example for all these okay be thorough with the usage of simple present tense in the upcoming class we shall proceed with the usage of present continuous present perfect and present perfect continuous thank you students and happy learning